The last time Mitt Romney ran for president uh, in 2007, heading into the 2008 campaign, the Boston Globe ran a get to know Mitt Romney human interest profile on the man who had been Massachusetts governor and who now wanted to be the United States president. That profile in the summer of 2007 opened up with what is now a very famous story. A very famous story about this member of the Romney family. Uh, the story involves this very, very handsome, enormous Irish setter whose name's Seamus. Uh, and it also involves that car, that wood paneled station wagon you see there on the right side of your screen. It also involves a 12 hour drive from the Boston area to Ontario, Canada. Ahem. And I quote. The white Chevy station wagon with the wood paneling was overstuffed with suitcases, supplies, and sons. When Mitt Romney climbed behind the wheel to begin the annual 12-hour family trek from Boston to Ontario, the destination for this journey in the summer of 1983 was his parents' cottage on the Canadian shores of Lake Huron. Before beginning the drive, Mitt Romney put Seamus, the family's hulking Irish setter, in a dog carrier and attached it to the station wagon's roof rack. He built a windshield for the carrier to make the ride more comfortable for the dog. The ride was largely what you'd expect with five brothers, ages 13 and under, packed into a wagon they called the White Whale. As the oldest son, Tag Romney commandeered the way back of the wagon, keeping his eyes fixed out the rear window, where he glimpsed the first sign of trouble. Dad, he yelled, gross! A brown liquid was dripping down the back window. Again, I'm quoting here from the Boston Globe, Globe uh, do not judge me. Um, a brown liquid was dripping down the back window. Payback from an Irish setter who had been riding on the roof in the wind for hours. As the rest of the boys joined in the howls of disgust, Romney coolly pulled off the highway and into a surface station. There he borrowed a hose, washed down Seamus and the car, then hopped back onto the highway. It was a tiny preview of a trait he would grow famous for in business. Emotion-free crisis management. All right, that was published in June 2007. At the end of that summer in 2007, Mitt Romney won the Ames, Iowa straw poll for president. Right after he won the straw poll, he went on Fox News Sunday, and the host of Fox News Sunday asked Mr. Romney about this dog business. Back in 1983, you took your Irish setter, Seamus, on a 12-hour road trip tied to the roof of your car. No, 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 no. Let, me finish. Like that, yeah. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. In a kennel, inside a kennel. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I have a yellow lab named Winston. I would no sooner put him in a kennel on the roof of my car than I would one of my children. Question. What were you thinking? Uh, uh, this is a, uh, a completely airtight uh, kettle and uh, mounted on the top of our car. He climbed up there regularly, enjoyed himself. He was in a kettle at home a, a great deal of time as well. We loved the dog. Uh, it was where he was comfortable. We had five kids inside the car. My guess is he liked it a lot better in his kennel than he would have liked it inside. Well, i got to tell you, Massachusetts law and dog lovers, and I'm one of them, take this seriously. Massachusetts law prohibits carrying an animal on top of a car, even in a kennel, as cruel and inhuman. Do you no, really I, think I wasn't, nothing I, wasn't, I wasn't familiar with that uh, in terms of Massachusetts law. Love my dog. We've, got, we've had a lot of dogs over the years. Love them. Uh, Seamus, as his name is, uh, climbed up there all by himself, uh, enjoyed his ride. And whether you're in the back of a pickup truck or in the rooftop carrier, uh, it was a good ride. And, uh, and all I can tell you is I, I, I didn't know the, uh, that there was any problem with that uh, in terms of the law. I'm glad that Fox host uh, Chris Wallace asked Mitt Romney about that when the story first came out. So we were able to get Mr. Romney on the record about it. And I actually think that Mr. Wallace at Fox is usually pretty good with follow-up questions with politicians. Uh, he did not, however, ask the obvious follow-up at this point in the interview. This is a, a, a completely airtight uh, kettle and uh, mounted on the top of our car. He climbed up there regularly, enjoyed himself. Enjoyed himself. He later said uh, he enjoyed his ride. Enjoyed his ride. Remember, though, the story that had just broken in the Boston Globe, the, the story that prompted Mr. Wallace's question, Mr. Wallace's question to Mr. Romney in the first place, was that Seamus, however much he usually enjoyed himself on other occasions, Seamus on that 12-hour ride to Canada was not enjoying himself. The whole point of the anecdote, as told to the Boston Globe, was that the dog was in very, very evident gastrointestinal distress. The whole brown liquid thing, I'm sorry, that's the point of the story. 
The reporter from the Boston Globe who first described the Seamus incident in 2007, the guy who wrote the article, did not write about this incident again four and a half years after he wrote the original story. He finally broke his silence and wrote about it again for the first time this week. The reporter's name is Neil Swidey. Uh, you can tell that he's somewhat reluctantly going back to this subject, but he notes that even as he criticizes some people for exaggerating the story or embellishing his reporting about the story, uh, or, or he, he says that people have questioned his reporting inappropriately, he does think that one part of this is important. He says, to me, Romney's critics have focused on the wrong part of the anecdote. It's not that Romney put his dog on the roof. I'll take the Romneys at their word that Seamus loved his al fresco rides. What is beyond debate, though, is that this far into this particular trip, Seamus had ceased enjoying his ride, right? This would be the gross part of the story. Faced with such irrefutable evidence, most people, I suspect, would have relented and let the ailing dog cram into the back of the wagon. Right. Even if you're okay with the dog being strapped to the roof of the car, once the dog has been up there for hours and is sick, once he is ailing, you take a hose to him and then put him back up there and then keep driving with him still strapped to the roof of the car for more hours? Do you remember Rick Santorum's Google problem? Rick Santorum famously said um, that same-sex relationships were akin to man-on-dog relationships. Uh, in retaliation for that and other things, uh, proponents of gay rights Google-bombed Google Rick Santorum. They redefined his last name as a vulgar, sexually explicit term. And then they pushed that redefinition of the word Santorum to the top of his Google search results via a website called SpreadingSantorum.com. There is now a SpreadingRomney.com website, which is about poor Seamus. And it defines the word Romney as a verb, which means, well, you can, you can see it here. The word terror there is a hyperlink to that story about Mr. Romney strapping his dog to the roof of the car and then the dog getting sick and then Mr. Romney hosing off the dog and then strapping the dog back to the roof of the car for more hours of driving. This incident happened in 1983. It has been around in the public record since 2007. As Mr. Romney's political fortunes have risen, the story has received more and more attention. This week, the Newt Gingrich campaign uh, not some, some pack vaguely related to Newt Gingrich, but the Newt Gingrich for President campaign uh, put up this web ad, uh, which features footage of Chris Wallace asking Mitt Romney about the dog amid a number of other Mitt Romney gaffes from the campaign trail. The title of the Newt Gingrich web ad is For the Dogs. The Newt Gingrich campaign has also created an official website called petswithnewt.com, where people take pictures of their beloved animals, and I guess they sort of describe their animals as Newt Gingrich supporters. It's a little weird. Why would you do that? But it exists. Uh, Mr. Gingrich's spokesman asked if the campaign did this Pets with Newt thing to create a contrast with what we know about Mitt Romney and pets. Uh, the Gingrich campaign spokesman responded by saying, quote, I will neither confirm nor deny that that's why Pets with Newt was launched. Unrelated to Mr. Gingrich, uh, there's also what appears to be a grassroots website called dogsagainstromney.com. They refer to the Seamus incident as Crate Gate. Uh, you can buy a t-shirt like this that says, never forget Crate Gate Dogs Against Romney. Uh, they have blog posts like this one, howling mad at Mitt Romney, or this one uh, with the tough looking dog, let's see who goes on the roof now. But the overall idea here is that Mitt Romney is unfit to be president because of the way he treated his dog. Look at this. Hi, I'm Rusty. Mitt Romney is mean to dogs. Help me get my message out. The t-shirts on, on the website uh, hit the Mitt Romney is mean theme over and over again. Uh, in fact, this one just says it. Mitt is mean. Dogsagainme.com. Whether or not the, the Seamus story, oh, Seamus, uh, whether or not the Seamus story moves you, the reason this story has some political energy behind it, the reason this story has, forgive me, uh, legs, is because the idea of a presidential candidate as mean, as cold and unfeeling, that is something that can be a defining framework in a presidential election.